Well, well, well. GT7 1.11, or in other words, the April update of Gran Turismo 7, has of course arrived today. It didn't take that much time, at least for me, to install it, which is pretty cool. And it brings, of course, a ton of things which we talked about in a previous update video after I'd initially ranted, as well as pretty much everyone else in the community, about the issues in the game. Of course, credits were altered to be bad, etc, etc. You can check out that video if you're not aware of what happened. Now, the update is here, and it is more than an improvement over what we had before, because technically, not only does it restore what was gone wrong, but it also makes it better than it was before. Now, with that being said, you could fairly strongly argue it's, in other words, making things as they should have been from day one in some cases, but regardless, it's certainly a step in the right direction. Now, what can you expect from this update? Put simply, it's a combination of improvements, fixes, all that kind of stuff, and a couple of newer things. Now, I'm not going to run through every single minute detail and sentence, but you can see some of the things here on screen. If you do log into your game, go back to the main menu where you can do the music rallies and scroll to the bottom of the screen, you can see this same list that I've got here, or at least had on screen probably at some point in the video, and you can read all of these for yourself. Basically, the stuff that you need to know is that the circuit experiences have been drastically improved in terms of money. They're still not necessarily the best way to grind something, unless you're the kind of person to get golds immediately every time, then they are a pretty good way of doing it. Of course, the payouts only happen once, which is nothing new for circuit experience. I personally have no issue with that at all. And it's still, as I said, in my easy money earning guide, and even the guide that I made before the game even came out, circuit experience is always a good way for beginners and newcomers to basically earn a huge bonus in cash each time you get access to a new circuit. So that is even better than before. And for those who are curious, myself, in fact, I asked a couple of the other guys who had already played this game this morning before I'd even logged in, how do we redeem the money if we've already done it? Well, great news is you don't lose out even if you've done all of the events before in the circuit experience, as long as you've got all golds or all bronzes, you can log back into the game, click on each of those circuit experiences, go in and exit again immediately, and you will get that payout. So for me, for example, I logged in, I hadn't done all that many, and I immediately got like whatever it was, 1.8 million, 1.3 million, something like that, just from events that I'd previously done, and then begin earning the new stuff. So that was great. New events are also in the game as well, with significantly improved and higher payouts. Now, for example, you can race at Le Mans for like 1.6, 1.7 million credits an hour, which is a vast improvement over what they did in the last update, of course. We have a number of fixes in terms of stuff like graphics, physics, the online aspect of the game with a couple of leaderboards being reset, the uh, penalties that people would get have been altered a little bit, tyre smoke graphics, a couple of the vehicles had glitches apparently, I, I didn't notice that myself, on the A86 and the older Mazda RX-7, so that's great, they've improved that as well. And of course the credit cap was increased from 20 million to 100, which is great, it means you don't have to clear your bank account out every time you buy a, a high roller. Speaking of high rollers, another improvement is there are more cars now in the legendary, and more importantly, in the regular used dealer. So at any given time, there are now more cars than there were before. We also have basically an increase in the invite time window. So those exclusive cars, like your Carrera GT, like your LaFerrari, you know, that kind of thing, where you can only buy it if you're invited to, now that has increased from a 14-day window to a 30-day window, which is fantastic. It means you don't have to rush to buy these cars or feel that you're basically dumping all of your credits while you get the chance into buying one of these vehicles. The rewards in races is not only in career mode, though. It's also been improved in arcade events and custom events as well, so it really is across the board. And as you'll see in this video as well, the endurance section, each about an hour long, with pretty good payouts, I believe it's something like 1.2 million per event, they said, so a pretty nice total plus some prize vehicles have been added to the missions as well. Now, if I recall correctly, I think you still have to get up to a certain level, I think it's like 23 or something in the cafe menu before you can access those, but that's basically how it already worked. You would unlock missions at different levels anyway. For those of you who find the cafe missions a bit boring or childish, I would urge you to stick with it. For two reasons. One, that is for now the main career aspect of the game. But also, more importantly, as I outlined in my money earning guide, 
it is the best way of getting free cars. You get so many great cars from that. Your Audi Pikes Peak Quattro, your 205 T16, your Ferrari F12, a number of other really great cars that you don't have to waste any credits on, even if you do love them. So across the board, and there are certainly one or two other smaller things which I haven't mentioned, if there's something which I missed or which you want to highlight from the list, by all means talk about it down below in the comments. But that's the general gist of what you can expect if you do decide to log back in. I know some of you went away from the game, some people uninstalled it completely. Of course, I still had to produce content for it, so I didn't go quite that far, but I was definitely playing it a lot less and certainly enjoying it a lot less, and I'd completely stopped grinding for anything but the cheapest of cars. Now, though, we can get back into full swing. Even just this morning, before really getting into the new events, I already bought like eight or nine new vehicles from the used dealer. So yeah, it certainly brings the fun factor back up again. I do believe that, as the Angry Joe show mentioned... Uh, in AJS News recently, where he actually even featured some of my footage in the background, which was fun to see, he mentioned that this is, and I agree with him, kind of a testing of the waters to really push the microtransactions. That is the danger here. Thankfully, we gave them a real kickback on not wanting that kind of gameplay and not accepting and not standing for that. Don't be surprised if we have to deal with this kind of thing again in some kind of different way. Because let's not forget that stuff like not being able to sell cars was already a problem in GT Sport, and now it was still in GT7 as well. So don't be surprised if we have future issues to deal with. That is one of the few advantages of having updates, that you can actually improve things on the fly rather than being stuck with whatever whatever's on the disc. Ultimately though, that's it for this news piece. Of course I will be putting out content as usual, but probably even more so in terms of expensive cars now, and if you are maybe a bit cheesed off with the game or bored of the grinding, now is certainly the time to get back into it. But ultimately that's it for this bit of news, tell me your thoughts down below, and obviously stick around on the channel for more. But until next time, I'll see you then, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.